Hello everybody and welcome to part 10 of our NLTK with Python for Natural Language Processing tutorial video. In this video we're going to be talking about WordNet. So WordNet is probably one of the largest, um, not really corpus, but uh, the largest, I suppose, capability uh, corpus, uh, corpora, that you're going to be given with NLTK. So with WordNet what you can do is you can take words and you can look up synonyms to words and antonyms and definitions and then even um, context of that word. So let's go ahead and just dive in because there's a bunch of stuff to do. So first we're going to do from nltk.corpus we're going to import WordNet. Now this import takes a few seconds depending on your computer um, so just be patient with it. Uh, then let's say we want some synonyms or sin sets basically so sins equals wordnet dot sin sets and then you can put in the word here let's use the word program because program actually has a lot of meanings um, it could mean a lot of things so we'll do that and let's go ahead and just print sins <coughs> okay so here we have some sin, uh, sin sets or sin set yeah sin sets so it's just a list right it's a list of these sin sets and you'll see later on that we can end up using this right here as uh, a search parameter down the line. Uh, anyway, so you can see that for program we have things like plan, program, uh, broadcast, and that's because program has many different meanings. So you can see that we actually have quite a few program nouns. Uh, but plan, broadcast, course of study, um, that's the only other ones that I see. Anyways, those are sin sets, and then obviously, since it's a list, you could reference an element in that list. So you could say the zeroth element. Um, now, we can also get, say, we want like maybe just the word. So we could do something like this. So we could say print sins zero dot lemmas. Um, well, first we should probably we can do dot. Let's do that lemmas. So let's see what that gives us first. So we want the zeroth element, but right. So some lemmas for this are like plan, plan, <laughs> and plan, uh, with a special uh, spelling of programma. Anyway, <laughs> lemmas zero and then dot name, like that. So you can get just plan, and then if um, you may or may not be able to actually get away with doing dot name here as well. Let's try that. Right. So here the problem is uh, you're getting just you're getting like the whole sin set. The sin set dot name is this, not uh, this. Whereas the name for the lemma is going to be just that, like an actual word. So anyways, there's that. Um, sin set. Just the word, just for some notation there. Now, um, let's take it a little further and do like a definition. So we can print uh, sins zero dot definition. I'll do parms. <clears throat> and this will give us the definition for the specific word that we're looking at. So uh, this one is for plan. It's a series of steps to be carried out or goals to be accomplished. Okay, that makes sense. So then, what we can do is we can also do examples. So like I was saying before, in context, so we could do sins zero dot uh, examples. Save and run that. Let me pull this up a little bit. They draw up a, or they drew up a six step plan. They discussed plans for a new bond issue. Okay, so that makes sense. So now <clears throat> we could do this for any of the elements in the list. But then, what if we wanted to have synonyms and antonyms? Well, we can, um, I guess we'll leave this stuff here. It's okay. Because um, I always post the source code, but if you want, you can delete this stuff and it'll kind of make some space for you. Um, but I'm going to do this, this. So now we're going to say synonyms equals an empty list, antonyms equals an empty list. And then we're going to say for sin in wordnet.sin sets. And we're going to use the word good since it has good synonyms and antonyms. 
Uh, for sin in wordnet.sin, that's good. And then we're going to say for um, L for lemma in sin.lemmas. What do we want to do here? Well, we're going to say synonyms.append L.name. Because <clears throat> again, lemmas, if you remember, are like synonyms, so we're just going to treat them like synonyms. And then if there are any L dot antonyms, uh, whoops, that'll be uh, empty parms there. We're going to say ant antonyms dot append L dot antonyms, empty parameters, element zero, dot name. Okay, so L antonyms zero, so that should kind of be like right here basically lemmas zero dot name um, we'll print out a little bit more at a time um, after we run through this one time so you can see what each step of the way is doing but for now let's go ahead and print set uh, synonyms and let's print the set of antonyms and let's fix print in a moment antonyms print print save and run that Drink some coffee. Okay. Um, okay. So we have synonyms, which is um, these are synonyms. So thoroughly, full, skillful, well, beneficial, trade good. So obviously this is a synonym for the literally the term good, as in goods or services. So trade good, secure, safe. Okay. All this stuff. Synonyms to good. And then you have antonyms to good. Evilness, ill, bad, evil badness okay so you're gonna get synonyms and antonyms but again because we're using lemmas which are like synonyms it's not gonna be just synonyms for just the term good as in good or bad it's gonna be good as in good good or service and that kind of stuff so there's that uh, let us for each step of the way we can print let's say we don't need to do sin for that because we already we've seen what word dot sin sets gives us but, and then sin lemmas, uh, let's print L here. I'm going to comment this out just so you can see the L. So this will be um, L colon that. And then synonyms we append. If L dot antonyms, then we're just appending the antonyms. So really the only thing that you haven't seen directly would be sin dot lemmas. But of course we have that right here. So this like sins zero dot lemmas, we were taking just the first lemma, uh, but this actually could be a list of lemmas. So we'll actually we'll do this real quick and hopefully get a list. Right. So these are your your all of your possible lemmas. <laughs> right. So it's a lot of them. Uh, anyway, so that is um, WordNet up to this point for synonyms, antonyms, all that. I'm going to leave this here now. I'm going to actually get rid of this print statement. We don't need that anymore. And we'll leave these. Now I'm going to create a little bit more space. And then now we're going to talk about uh, similarity. So this will be semantic similarity. Uh, so to do that, let's first start with two words. So we're going to have word one equals and word two is going to equal something. Word one we'll say is wordnet.sinset and we'll use a uh, ship, a noun, and we'll just use zero one, the first the first one. There must be one, <laughs> okay, for a noun for ship. And then for wordnet, we'll say wordnet.sinset, and then we'll use boat, noun, and the first one again, just so we know that it's gonna be one. Like there's there might may or may not be a boat noun eleven, right? but there's definitely a ship or boat one. <laughs> so anyway, uh, now what we can do is we can compare the similarity between these two words uh, to find the semantic similarity. So we're gonna print, and what we do is print w1.wup, and this stands for Wu and Palmer. Uh, and they have a, Wu and Palmer wrote a paper uh, like early 90s about uh, semantic similarity between words and this is kind of uses the method that they used so we'll say wor uh, wup underscore similarity and then um, you compare its similarity to what so comparing the similarity of word one to word two 
And um, let's just try that one out first. <clears throat> so this will be like a percentage. Right. So they're saying these are 90% basically similar. Um, so now, and I'm sorry, I guess it's not a percentage, it'll be a decimal, where 1 is 100%, and so you multiply this by 100. Anyway, so that's 90% similar. Well, that sounded that sounds pretty successful. So let's try a few more. Uh, so let's just copy this, paste, and paste. Let's do ship and car, and ship and cat, shall we? Wait for it. Okay, ship and car are 69%, and ship and cat are 32. That sounds about right because ship and boat 90% accurate or 90% similar, uh, or really 91. Why is that? Because they are basically the same thing. Uh, ship and car 69, almost 70% uh, similar, most likely because they're you know a vehicle, let's say. And then ship and cat, uh, definitely not really that similar. So 32%. That's understandable. Um, ship and how about a cactus? Thirty-eight. So a ship, a ship is more similar to a cactus than a cat. Makes total sense. Anyway, uh, so that's how you can do some similarity between words uh, if you find yourself needing to do something like that. So what might what might people use sin sets for? Uh, and NLTK plus sin sets plus maybe word similarity. Uh, you can actually use it for two different things. One is to rewrite things. So when you have um, there's businesses that will, for example, sell you uh, like term papers and stuff for school. So if you have to write a term paper, sometimes you can go online and you can just buy one, right? I'm not advocating for that, but a lot of times what those services are going to do is they'll take someone will submit their term paper and then they use some form of natural language processing, start switching words around. <laughs> okay, so they, they take it and they start changing words. That way they can sell this to like five, ten kids and they have hopefully a different paper. But then what the other people can do is the schools can come by, read the paper, and then use you know the the exact same methodology only reversed to find out who has been uh, just simply switching words around so they can use similarity to figure out are people just switching synonyms and stuff like this or you know the other thing you can do is you can use an antonym and then you can say not sometimes depending on what the what the word is right so if it's an action let's say you can flip it uh, or a description, you could flip it, stuff like that. But anyway, so if you want to catch people who are cheating, or you want to cheat on your term papers, uh, this is probably pretty common. Same thing with like people that uh, write news bots, and where the news bot writes, you know, there's people that make websites that are completely controlled by robots, or not robots, but computers, right? And they write articles, but the way that they write articles, they read other people's articles, they switch a few things around, post up that article, and claim it as their own. So that's another example of how they might do that. And then Google, again, will come through, and in their at least their goal, I don't think they're very good at it at this point, but they seem to be pretty good at not getting bought websites up. Uh, but they can do the exact same opposite and check it against other people's content. Anyway, pretty cool stuff there, pretty simple. Uh, the word similarity, I think, is a pretty hard one to write yourself. Synonyms, antonyms, pretty hard. You'd have to build your own word net, and why would you? You already have one. Um, and and I, that's about it, I think. Uh, the lemmas is useful, obviously. But anyways, a lot of really powerful things that you can do with WordNet. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.